greetings everyone, it is IT2 and uh, just got back from my mom and dad's house, I went to visit them on the weekend and uh, on the way down there I almost hit a goat it was interesting because there was this big dog and the goat, like the goat got out of the fence or whatever and the dog, they just went on an adventure together and they went out in the middle of the road and then on the way back I saw a cyber truck first one I've ever seen Pretty cool. So, a little tidbit for you guys that don't watch my book reviews, and uh, you're missing out. Of course, you'd never know because you didn't watch it. Anyway, today I want to talk about The Justice of Kings. Just finished this by Richard Swan. First book I've read by Richard Swan. Um, do I have the second book? Third book's not supposed to be as good, but the second book I think is supposed to be even better than this. I think I've got it back there. Um, so, I thought it was going to be about a king. Who was passing his judgment on people because people won't really tell you what stuff's about they just tell you if it's good or not and they kind of give you basically how the plot they don't even tell you the plot usually most of these booktubers this is about a guy who is the king they're like the emperor it's not even it's this thing called the justice of kings in the book but the emperor he has these justices that go around like sheriffs and they kind of do detective work and this kind of German, Germanic kind of fantasy world, and he has the ability to use the voice of the Emperor, which is not even like something the Emperor can use, they just call it that because it's like this magic that the church used to have, and he can command people to tell him the truth, and he can like kind of tell him what to do, like he can make people drop their weapons and stuff, he's supposed to be a good swordsman, there was like this Reichskrieg or something, where like these massive wars before everything became really civilized and they adapted this religion and this code and the emperor has all these laws and stuff and there's the the story is told from this woman helena she's like his clerk like a law clerk and there's another guy follows him around kind of like a bodyguard so there's three of them and it's all like cold and rainy usually and they're going from like town to town and it starts out with a small village a village called real and there's supposedly like a witch living off in the woods and the people there they've all started like being heathens they're, they're uh, worshipping this daedric kind of magic I don't think it's called daedric but it's close to daedric it's like similar to the Skyrim thing and anyway the justice he uh, lets them all pay like a penny and convert back to the right religion and he like lets it go because he's a nice guy he's fair and this other guy that's with him, he's like this crazy priest who's... It didn't seem like, seem like he had any power in the beginning when he was with him. But then he like ran off. Suddenly, uh, he talks to this one guy who's like second or third or whatever below the emperor. He's like really high up. And he has like this whole castle of knights and lands and everything. And he brings that guy's army. Somehow he's converting everybody into this, like becoming fanatical. And this guy, the the justice, he's been away from the main capital for a couple of years. So he keeps telling him he needs to go back there and see what's changed because things have gone a different way than he's probably thinking. And so the the priest, they raise this village to the ground to kill everybody. So that pisses the justice. Uh, what is his name? It's like Von Vault. What's his full name? It's in there somewhere. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um. So he's also investigating a murderer of this kind of like nobleman's wife in a neighboring village while this is happening. So he's kind of like going back and forth and he's having these trials and stuff. And he can also use his ability to bring dead people back to life temporarily and ask them questions about how they died. So that's really cool. And there's some of the other ones, not here, there's other justices out there. There's a woman, she can like talk to animals and she can like control foxes and birds and things. But at one point they use this rune of entrapment or something on her when she's in the fox form and they kill the fox while she's in its brain. So then she becomes like a brain dead vegetable. And I don't know. There's like this uh, monastery or whatever it's called and like Helena has to infiltrate it and she gets kind of trapped and they have to break her out. All kinds of cool fight scenes and weird kind of tension and intrigue and like the armies coming to the town where they're having this trial at the same time. And it's just a pretty wild book. 
Um, it's kind of like it's telling the story of how the emperor, the empire, falls apart because of this one little town's actions, or like it was the first domino that started the whole fall of the empire. The empire is called the Empire of the Wolf. That's what the trilogies, is, the books, are called. And it has like this two-headed wolf. It's like the symbol of the empire. The Autun, I think, is what the emperor is called. And then, um, yeah, there's something about a snake god. Like, so when he's talking to people when they're dead, he's doing necromancy. There's like these demons or some kind of gods or entities or some like eldritch forces that are behind, like talking through this dead guy. Sometimes they'll say like, "I see this woman in the room," and then like. The third guy that's with him, he says, I don't know, you need to like get out of here. He whispers to her. She starts to leave and she bumps into Conrad, Von Vault. Yeah, that's his name, Conrad. And then she starts seeing the afterlife and it freaks her out because she's seeing like these entities and weird shit. Like, starts having dreams about it. And the guy told her that he gave her the mark of the of the trickster, the, the whisperer, or something weird like that, right? So she's got this mark. So... I don't know what that means. Maybe they're just fucking with you. Like, he also used it to kind of scare this guy when he says he's about to hang him. He says, you don't know, like, what's on the other side. I've seen all these things. And, like, he's like, what's on the other side? What are you talking about? He's, like, really scared. It's really cool. This is almost like a horror book at the same time. Like a medieval horror. Really got a Halloween-y vibe to it. Um, which kind of makes me want to read the second one, like, right away. But, I don't know. Anyway, I was also reading... Dead and Gone, uh, Charlene Harris at the same time. Or maybe I read it right after, I don't remember. But this one I really liked. I gave it five stars. Um, I know there's a big fairy war in it, but I can't really remember like what all was going on in this one. It seemed like it was just better quality than the other books, like there was more stuff happening. Dead and the Family I'm reading right now, and it is like maybe three, four stars. But this one, really quite enjoyed it. Charlene Harris just has a weird writing style, like, Suki Stackhouse does, like, slice of life, everyday bullshit, like, she talks about getting an Oreo blast at Sonic, and then the next day, like, vampires are fighting fairies and werewolves in her living room, and everybody's getting murdered, and she has to cover up murders, and then she goes back to work, ah, I had to go back, I had to work that night, so I had to put on my waitress outfit and go to the bar and serve some, some Diet Cokes at Merlot's, and like, what? so weird how the transitions uh anyway it's not really following the tv series at all with tara thornton is like this not like tara in the tv show and she's dating eric and eric kind of tricked her into marrying him like presenting him with this knife somehow how vampires get married you present them with a knife and like most of eric's squad got murdered by this new guy from las vegas that's wanting to take over louisiana and like Bill is kind of out of the picture, but he still loves her and wants to sleep with her, <laughs> which is weird. And, like, she was dating Al Seed, but now he's kind of gone off and, like, dating this other woman and, like, a lot of her friends. The ones that haven't died, a lot of them have just plain died, but a lot of them are, like, pregnant or getting married and starting their own lives, and she's kind of... I mean, she wants to be with a vampire because she can't read their minds. That's the whole thing. If she was dating a human, she'd be, like, hearing their thoughts all the time and it would freak her out, but... So Stackhouse books are pretty good. They're really fast too. I don't like three hundred something pages, so you can zip through them. I don't understand. Like this is three hundred something pages, and this is like four hundred something pages. I guess it's a little bit thicker, but like it must be how they do the font sizes in these books. A lot of them, like you can have a paperback like like this. Terry Goodkind, Wizard's First Rule. This is like how many pages? Eight thirty-five. This looks like a twelve hundred page. Patrick Rothfuss novel or something. I don't know. Hard to tell how many pages something is. There's thicknesses of pages and there's the margins you can change. I don't know. Anyway, a couple good books. Dead in the Family. Not think it's going to be fantastic.